Okay. So yeah, uh, my name is Vadim. I'm working at Meta, and today I'm gonna introduce you a new subsystem that will be uh, available in the Linux uh, kernel 6.7. Uh, it's called DPLL. Uh, it uh, represents the um, devices, uh, the DPLL devices, uh, which are digital uh, phase lock loop. Um, so we um, created this device, uh, this uh, subsystem. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's talk about the, what, what's what's the phase lock loop uh, system. Is like kind of simple devices uh, which have uh, a phase comparator, uh, loop filter, and uh, controlled uh, uh, oscillator and uh, feedback path. And the main the main mm, thing is that. Uh, it has an output signal which is uh, um, phase synchronized to the input one, and on the on the reverse path we have a, a frequency divider or multiplier, and in this case you can just create a new frequency, the new output frequency, which will be phase aligned to the input signal, and. Uh, the digital part here is uh, the digitally controlled oscillator on the output, and uh, again, it also can be a digital filter or and a digital uh, comparator. So uh, again, the subsystem uh, was created to. Uh, to be able to control the and monitor this kind of devices. Uh, it slightly extends the pin part of uh, PTP devices. Uh, also, uh, what we introduce here is the configuration of the priorities for the input signal because uh, the main uh, problem here is to have a signal output signal which uh, should be face uh, um, aligned to the input but input signals can be different and can uh, sometimes can disappear for example um, so the part of subsystem can provide you the interface to control uh, um, the priorities of the different input signals and uh, the monitoring part of of the input station. Um, also, it introduces uh, special devices to uh, mix the uh, inputs and outputs. Uh, so, in case uh, if the DPLO device doesn't have enough output or input uh, pins, you can multiply by using a special external. So yeah, uh, we did it on top of uh, Netlink Transport. Uh, I think it's uh, the easiest solution right now. Um, so in, we created uh, two separate objects. Uh, it's the DPLL device itself. Uh, it has like common attributes uh, like uh, identification attributes, and then the mode, uh, which can be automatic or manual selection of the input and output device uh, pins, and the type, uh, which is mostly uh, difference between uh, input, uh, uh, input frequency signals or uh, uh, recovered uh, frequency from the CMP device. And of course, we have uh, monitoring attributes coming from uh, Netlink messages, uh, mostly about the uh, log status of the DPLL device, the uh, phase offset, and the temperature, because the temperature is one of the main uh, uh, problems in the, uh, in the stability of the uh, output frequency. Uh, so the pin object here also have an identification and the connection attributes and it also has a, a labeling attributes because uh, it's more about the external connections to the uh, 
devices and you have to identify what what pin do you want to configure and uh, yeah also every pin can potentially have different directions of the signal so the same pin can be used for the input signal and for the output so we have to configure it uh, somehow and state con uh, state attributes uh, also so um, mostly devices can uh, can signal if they have something on the on the input device on the input pins and you have like we have a monitoring part of this um, yeah uh, uh, of course uh, GPL devices have some uh, limits on the output frequencies and uh, we uh, we added this uh, attributes to the pins actually because uh, Again, configuration depends on the on the pins output, not only the DPLL device. So some pins can be uh, can have extended ranges of frequencies. Uh, some can be like simple static uh, inputs. So this is uh, that's what we addressed. And uh, of course the connection uh, attributes. So um, with this subsystem, we can create a really uh, complex configuration of uh, pins uh, which uh, like uh, uh, so we can connect an external pin to the dp load device directly or you can do it through the mux device or it can be also the uh, synky port uh, like ethernet port and recovered uh, clock from 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 the ethernet yeah and this this is also an attribute to the uh, pin um, yeah, so all the details are actually in the Linux kernel tree right now. Uh, it's all merged and um, all the netlink primitives and uh, headers are automatically generated from the YAML schema, which is in the documentation part. Mm -hmm. And again, all the API is uh, in the documentation. And we have a couple of uh, drivers uh, already implemented this. Uh, TPL uh, subsystem. Um, so first of all, uh, we will talk about what's the API. Uh, yeah, the simple um, part is that for the TPL DPLL device itself, and we have only four operations that are supported right now. Only two of them are mandatory. Um, so. Uh, we have to uh, the, the device have to provide the mode that's supported by the device and can currently configured uh, again it's like PPS or EEC and uh, the log status get is also monetary uh, uh, operation uh, it just provides the status information of the DPLL device for pin object is slightly different it's a little bit more operations so we have to be able to get or set a frequency but again uh, it's not mandatory some devices can have fixed configuration of the pins um, we also have a uh, direction uh, changing stuff uh, but again the change of direction of the pin is not mandatory just uh, just the uh, status of the pin is uh, mandatory to, to, impl to, to implement. Um, then we have um, state of the pin. It means uh, if it's connected, if it's selected, or um, or not. Uh, this is like the mandatory uh, uh, thing. And uh, we also, if uh, DPL device supports prioritization of the inputs, uh, we also have. Uh, special operations to set or get the priority of each particular pin. Yeah, and talking about the drivers, so we did implement it in uh, our uh, OCP tab driver uh, for the time card created by the uh, meta. Uh, and a simple implementation, it just supports the PPS uh, mode uh, 
only and has a configuration of four external pins directly connected to the DPLL device. And for now, the monitoring part is just the log status of the of the DPLL uh, device. And it's a simple example of how to implement it in the driver. Uh, but uh, then we also have an implementation uh, which is done by Jiri. Uh, for NVIDIA MLX5 driver, and now it supports uh, ECC, EEC mode, it's uh, uh, SYNC key stuff, um, and the whole configuration for the SYNC key on the Ethernet port. And we also have a complex configuration, complex implementation uh, of uh, TPL device with like several uh, TPLL devices on the one physical board and uh, different uh, configuration of uh, the same pins uh, to the different DPLL devices inside the Intel ICE driver and it was implemented by Arkadiusz um, and it also has uh, uh, support for Synkey uh, configuration but they also have uh, external pins uh, on, on the boards so it can be switched back to the normal frequency mode. And uh, the testing part is right now, we have RFC patches from Michal, again from Intel, uh, to have the testing infrastructure for the DPL device, which doesn't, doesn't uh, need anything hardware related. It's just, a, I would say, integration uh, framework. Um, Still have some uh, questions uh, for this uh, patch set, uh, but uh, I hope it will be integrated into NetDev Sim uh, uh, device that we have for for the testing. Um, yeah, so uh, have to say that it uh, was a collaborative work with uh, Intel, uh, especially Arkadiusz, uh, Michal, and Milena. And they proposed the uh, separate objects for the pins uh, because the first implementation was to have it all inside the DPLL device. And uh, yeah, again, as I said, uh, they implemented DPLL stuff in ICE driver. Um, and also, a lot of comments and work came from uh, GD from NVIDIA. Um, uh, the, I would like to highlight here the connection between net device and DPLL device uh, was totally done by him and the uh, MLX5 driver implementation too. So I believe that's it. So if you have any questions. Hello. <clears throat> Do you have any uh, additional monitoring or metrics on it beyond the temperature? So things like uh, frequency or you know min-max offset type approach. Yeah, we have we have phase offsets, uh, so we can uh, we can monitor it via netlink messages, uh, the status of the device and the uh, offsets of the output of of the yeah output uh, frequency compared to the input one. Perfect. Thank you. Football player, I'm not. Um, so I, this is just curiosity, but the previous project and employer I had, we worked on a 5G uh, thing where we needed Synkey and so on. We we're working with uh, mostly Intel devices. Mm -hmm. And as of a year or so ago, the merge status of the drivers we needed for uh, DPLL support and Synkey were a little on the edge. So where are we right now in terms of Linux kernel version and how much is upstream? And everything is upstream not, right now. Everything's upstream right now? Yeah, everything is upstream and it will be in the current release uh, 6.7. 6.7? Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Any more questions?
Thanks.